Not only is Nvidia releasing a bunch of cards between January and February, but Samsung might be producing Nvidia's next GPUs once again. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Ares Game and their AGV 750 power supply. The AGV 750 is a 750-watt, 80-plus bronze semi-modular power supply with over 335 star ratings on Amazon. It features great-looking black modular cables, overpower and overvoltage protection, a silent 120mm fan, and best of all, a 5-year warranty. Additionally, the AGV 750 comes with enough cables to power all your devices and they even include the screws and nice black zip ties for cable management. So if you're looking for an affordable and high quality semi-modular power supply, click the link in the description below to find out more. So this first bit of information comes from the website Igor's Lab, which by the way, there will be links to all my sources in the description below. And if you like the video, make sure to do that and share it with your friends as I just got demonetized by YouTube. So anything that you can do helps a ton. But in any case, in his article, he had this to say in regards to the RTX 3080 Ti's release date. Quote, if the information I got from several sources, up to suppliers, is correct and congruent, then the GeForce RTX 3080 Ti with 20 gigabytes of graphics memory will be launched only after the Chinese New Year. And Igor seems to think that it's going to happen probably sometime at the end of February, so I know that's going to be pretty disappointing for a lot of you that were hoping that an RTX 3080 Ti would be coming out in January, as there's been a lot of things pointing to that actually happening. But, you know, this does actually make a lot of sense to me, because, I mean, we're coming close to January already, and if you take a look at cards such as the RTX 3080, well, they're pretty much nowhere to be found. I mean, we are three months after the launch of that card, and for whatever reason, I think part of it might be due to the fact that the RTX 3080 is using the same GPU as the RTX 3090, and if yields are good, well, I could see why maybe they want to sell a bunch more 3090s, but either way, even 3090s are somewhat hard to get, and it's, again, been three months since the launch of the RTX 3080, which is using the same GA102 die, and here we are, you know, moving into January, and they're going to be trying to launch another GPU. I mean, that might just be a little bit too difficult at this point, so they might be pushing it back, hopefully to get a little bit more supply, as I do think that NVIDIA believes they're going to be able to meet demand at some point in quarter one of 2021, but they're not quite there yet. And I also think that this lines up with the other piece of information I have to share with you, which comes directly from NVIDIA, where they posted on Twitter, quote, mark your calendars, join us as we unveil the latest innovations in gaming and graphics on January 12th, 2021 at 9 a.m. PST. And then if we take a look at the image here, it says GeForce RTX. RTX Game On, a special broadcast event, January 12th, 9 a.m. PST. So I think when we take this piece of information, we add it to what Igor's lab had to say, well, it starts to paint a pretty clear picture of what's going on here. So I believe what's going to happen is during this event, NVIDIA is going to show off their RTX 3080 Ti graphics card, but it's not actually going to be available until sometime in February, probably late February, because it does make sense that, you know, they're not going to want to release something during the Chinese New Year, as pretty much all the production kind of halts at that point. So that makes a lot of sense to me. And then, you you know, that does allow them to show something in January, but at the same time, it allows them to build up a little bit more stock before they release it. So yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense to me, but they'll probably be mostly talking about AI stuff, but just in case they might release that 3080 Ti, well, I'm going to be live streaming the event, so if you're not subscribed already, be sure to do so. And now onto the final topic, new cards releasing. So yeah, we know that the 3080 Ti, possibly 3070 Ti, 3060, and 3050 might all be releasing between January and February, but on top of that, there's a new report from the Korea Economic Daily that states that that supposedly NVIDIA's next generation cards will once again be produced on Samsung's 8 nanometer process. And while I could see how, you know, maybe NVIDIA would be releasing their next generation cards on Samsung once again, because if you take a look at TSMC, you can see just how many orders they have to fill, and this can make it very difficult for NVIDIA to squeeze in and sell a bunch of gaming graphics cards. What doesn't quite add up to me is the 8 nanometer part. So I'm not entirely sure if this report is true. I definitely have my doubts, but like I said earlier, it is possible for NVIDIA to do this, because if you take a look at their architecture, Architecture. What they're doing right now is they have uh, an integer slash FP32 uh, s section in their SMs, and then they have an FP32 section. And the problem with that type of design is while they were able to double the amount of FP32s by going to that design, what happens is if an integer operation comes across the GPU, well, it can't use just about half the FP32 cores in every single SM, which can drastically reduce the amount of performance that they can get out of these GPUs. So what they could do if they did want to use Samsung 8 nanometer once again, just that they could reduce the price of their overall GPUs is they could essentially just take that FP32 plus FP32 slash int and they could just do FP32 plus FP32 plus int and that would allow them to use all of their FP32 cores at once in every single SM which could absolutely give them an enormous increase in performance if they give it enough bandwidth and cash to do it. So that's something that they could do but to me it kind of doesn't make sense because why wouldn't you do that and also go to a lower node so that you can put more transistors into the GPU and get a lot more performance 
ones that way as well. So to me, you know, I could see them sticking with Samsung if they went to like maybe a seven nanometer Samsung process instead of eight nanometer, or I could definitely see them going to TSMC and using their seven nanometer process or even their five nanometer process if they wanted to. But, you know, I don't see how they would use the eight nanometer process once again. I think that would be a huge mistake on their part because if you look over at AMD, you'll notice that AMD is apparently going to be pushing for another 50% performance per watt gain. So if they are able to hit that with RDNA 3, that's going to spell huge, huge trouble for NVIDIA if they stay on Samsung 8 nanometers. So they definitely need to move to something else, at least in my opinion. But who knows, they could pull another Maxwell moment and just get a huge gain out of a really old process. It's something that's been done before. But again, this report does seem a little bit suspicious to me. But hey, that's just what I think. What process do you think NVIDIA will produce their RTX 4000 series graphics cards on? Also, be sure to like, comment, and share the video with friends if you did enjoy it. As you know, like I said earlier, uh, out of nowhere, YouTube decided to demonetize me. They gave me no reason whatsoever. I can't figure it out why I'm trying to get it fixed. But you know, for now, I'm definitely going to need your help to get these videos out. And I thank you everyone for watching. I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.